Hi there, it's Michael. Um, I tweeted something earlier today and I just kind of wanted to explain a little bit more about what I meant when I uh, tweeted that. Um, I said, unpopular opinion. All that junk you're putting in React context should just be props. Legit uses for context are rare and mostly for library code and not your app. Um, so uh, over the years that I've been teaching React and working with React, I've worked with a lot, a lot of different clients and I've seen a lot of apps where um, they, they're just putting sort of everything in context. They're putting all of their data and all of their state, they're putting in context uh, because they don't really want to think too much about sort of the right place to put it or where it belongs. And so they just put it there and then they can use it from anywhere that they want. Um, and, uh, and, and it's kind of a popular thing to do, especially uh, with tools like Redux, which make it very, very easy to just put everything in context and then share it anywhere in your app. Um, and there was, a, there was, you know, uh, naturally, there was, there was a little bit of pushback. Um, there, were, there were a couple of people who said, you know, like, like, uh, like this guy here, yeah, I disagree. Context should be used anytime you need to pass props more than one level deep. And, uh, and there's, this, there's this concept, uh, Ryan calls it prop drilling, um, which, uh, which is a term that has kind of caught on in, in the React community for this, this thing that happens is you get a prop, you pass it down, this component isn't really interested in that prop, and so it just keeps on passing it down to the components that are interested in it. Um, I replied with a, a screenshot from the React docs where I said, um, and, and I think this is great advice. It says, if you only want to avoid passing some props through many levels, if you want to avoid this prop drilling, component composition is often a simpler solution than context. Uh, to which a few people replied, you know, I don't, I don't get it. Um, what are you talking about? How does component composition help us with passing props down many levels? How, how does that, what, is, what does it mean to solve this problem using component composition? Uh, so I made a little example here that I thought might be helpful in uh, explaining this concept. Obviously, this example is totally contrived. I just made it up on the fly this afternoon. Um, but hopefully, the principle still applies and you can take it and, and apply it to your app um, if you're interested in, in figuring this out and getting a little bit of uh, practice with composition. So here I am in, uh, I just got a, a brand new app. I've got uh, my app component here. Uh, my app component holds a bit of state, which is the current user. Now, this is a, a piece of state, which is usually, you know, kind of considered to be global in an app. Uh, lots of times you put this state in context or, you know, just because everybody in the app or every component in the app needs to access this state. And so, um, so anyway, so the way the app works is if there is a current user, we're going to pass that user to the dashboard. Otherwise, we're just going to show this login screen. Uh, when they log in, we're going to set the current user. So normally this would be like you go and make a network call and actually authenticate and log in and get the user object. Uh, here, I've just, just hard coded it here. So when you log in here, uh, we're gonna say, welcome, Michael. Probably should have made like a log out button there or whatever, but anyway, I did it quickly. Okay, so um, so this dashboard component, what does it get? It gets the user, right? It gets the current user. Let's Let's scroll down and take a look at the dashboard component. So. So this might be like some components in your app where you get a prop, you get a piece of information, but you're not really interested in doing anything with that information. Um, you're really just passing it through to one of your child components, right? In this case, dashboard nav doesn't care, uh, dashboard content does. So we pass through the user object uh, through to the dashboard content um, uh, uh, element here. We'll go down and, and take a look at dashboard content. It gets the user, but you know, dashboard content really doesn't care about the user object either. It's just passing it straight on through to the welcome message component. Uh, and the first component in the hierarchy that actually reads from this user object and uses some of that data is, uh, is our welcome message component all the way down here. But you know, we're nested uh, we're nested a, a couple of levels deep here in the hierarchy. So we have some state all the way up here in the app. Uh, and we're not actually using it until we get through four different levels of the component hierarchy down here to welcome message. So this is the point where a lot of people would say, um, hey, you know what? Um, let's just put this on context, right? 
So I'm going to have some context up here. Uh, I'll uh, create some context. And then, uh, and then all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to wrap my app in a good old context provider. And we'll put the current user on there. There we go. All right. So, uh, so now, lucky me, all I've got to do is I've got to use this bit of context and I can get the user out. So. Instead of, instead of piping it through all these levels of props that don't care, look at this, look at how much cleaner my code is. I can just, whoosh, I can just remove it from here and I can remove it from uh, dashboard content. Dashboard content doesn't need it anymore. And, uh, and welcome message doesn't even get a prop anymore. The only thing we need to do is get the current user uh, from our uh, context object. So we're just going to use that context. We'll say react uh, use context. Uh, what do we call it? Oh, just the context object. All right. So let's. Oh, we call the current user here. So let's current user. Probably should have renamed it when I destructured that off. All right. So here we go. We can go and we can log in, and now we get it. Nice, right? No more prop drilling. Uh, no more, you know, passing that prop down three or four levels. All we've got to do is put it up in context once here, uh, put it on our context provider, and then no more prop passing. We just pull it out of context way down here in this welcome message component. Um, so is that, yeah, I mean, that's, that's one way to solve the problem. That's definitely a way to solve the problem. And you could solve it like that and you'd be happy and you'd go home and, and it's fine. Um, a couple of things here that, that are, you know, that are, that, that are a little concerning about this code. Uh, one thing about context is that it is, it is, you can think about it as like an implicit prop, right? It is implied. Um, if you take this welcome message and you take it and you render it outside of that context, for example, uh, let's say we had here and we had here and we rendered a welcome message here. Right? I mean, this, this welcome message is, uh, is rendered a lot in the same way as this one is right here on line 76. Um, neither one of them take any props, but one of them works uh, fine, and the other one doesn't. The other one throws an error. Why? Well, because this one is rendered out of context, right? So it doesn't have the right context. It can't get the current user from context uh, because it, it there is no context. So usually what you could do is you could put like uh, current user here and we put null here. Uh, but even that would uh, probably throw because now we're going to try and read the property name of null. So you might have to like stub out, you know, a fake current user or whatever, or, or, or check for the current user down here. Um, in, when you destructure it off, you could say like, you know, do we have a current user? Um, if we do put their name, otherwise, otherwise what on earth are we doing in the welcome message, right? What on earth are we doing here in this component? If there's no user, why are we showing a welcome message? We should probably not even be here, right? So, so this is this you know this this kind of complexity as it sort of trickles down to the rest of your app. Um, I think it's 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 because that you know this state is sort of implied. It's, it is implied that when we render this component, that we are already in this state. And if we are not, then we have to try and handle it somehow. Um, and I think that's complexity that we can avoid if we're just being uh, explicit. All right, so let's let's rewind the code, or let's rewind, uh, yeah, those changes that I made a little bit. Let's take it out of context. Let's go back to using our prop. Okay, and now we're now we're prop passing again. We're prop drilling again, and this is like so. Ugh, why am I prop drilling? Right. Well, um, remember that we said you know you could probably solve this problem through composition instead of using context. So. 
Like, what does that mean? Well, if you, if you take a look specifically at this piece of the app right here, we've got our dashboard and then we've got our login screen, okay? And each one of those components could render, you know, a lot of stuff. Specifically in this dashboard component, if you see a component like this, dashboard, um, that's rendering a lot of stuff. It's kind of like a black box. You just pipe in some stuff and then out pops the whole dashboard, the whole thing. Right, you could have a, you're gonna have the navigation in there. You have the content. You have the welcome message. You could, you could have a lot of stuff in that one component. Uh, but if you write it like this, it's not very composable, right? In in fact, in this case, I don't get to pick what elements are part of the dashboard, right? At this level, I just get to say dashboard, right? And so uh, React actually has this prop that is highly, highly underappreciated and, and underused, I think, which is the children prop, okay? So the way that React composes is you can actually pass children to this dashboard. So let's say instead of, uh, instead of passing, for example, the current user here, I'm just gonna, and, and this children prop really is the key to a lot of the, the way that we can compose these elements, right? So I have the opportunity now to say, well, what kind of stuff goes inside a dashboard? Well, we know that a dashboard has a dashboard nav, and we know that it also has some dashboard content, right? Um, and so we could go ahead and pass the user there. And then we could say, okay, dashboard, um, your job now, instead of getting this user prop, you're not going to get that user prop. You're just going to get a children prop and you just render the children, right? You just render the children, okay? So now you can log in, everything works. So we actually eliminated there one level of uh, prop drilling, right? The dashboard is no longer getting this user prop. All it gets is the children prop and we can pass the user prop directly to uh, dashboard content. Could we could we take it even one step further, right? Dashboard content now is kind of like a little bit of a black box. It's kind of like dashboard was earlier, right? Dashboard content. Uh, what is what all is in the dashboard content? Well, what if we uh, what if we decided to um, to just do the same technique here? What if we just had the children, and we'll just render the children here, and we'll take this welcome message. And we'll put this all the way up here as the children of our dashboard content. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so let's see, uh, current user here. Okay. Uh, so what is dashboard content doing now? Dashboard content is just rendering the, you know, the, the H3, I think it was and it's children. And now the only component that is actually getting the user prop is the welcome message. So let's go ahead and we'll log in again. Okay, so, so you can see now we, we haven't used context, we haven't used anything fancy, right? All we've used is a regular old prop and we're composing. Right, we're taking all of those elements that before were just inside this black box dashboard component. Black box meaning we don't know all of the stuff that it renders, right? And instead we use the children prop. Um, using the children prop both increases our ability to compose, right? It, it, it makes dashboard sort of customizable, right? What if I didn't want to have, you know, the nav for some reason, right? Okay, dashboard is now customizable. I can choose what goes inside the dashboard. Um, and it also eliminates all of that prop drilling that we were doing, right? Dashboard no longer needs a user prop. Uh, and instead, we can pass that prop right here to the component, the only component that really needs it in this whole hierarchy, which is the welcome message component. Um, and we can pass it directly because it's already in scope here in the app. So anyway, this is just a, a little video to just kind of, I just kind of wanted to describe a little bit more about what I think it means to, uh, to use composition to solve this problem of prop drilling 
instead of uh, instead of always resorting to context for sharing everything. I think context is very useful. I think it's really cool, but it has some very specific use cases. I think that are um, that, and most of the time you just really don't need it unless you're building like a library, uh, you know, something like a UI library or something like React Router, or um, or or you're dealing with like really truly global data like some like a theme or something like that or like the current language setting or something like that or pref user preferences or something so anyway hopefully that was uh useful and uh thanks for watching bye